you write, my public explorations are not driven by audience service, but by my lack of ability for discovering, understanding, or following the relevant authorities. So I have to develop my own thoughts. Since I think autonomously, these thoughts cannot always be very good. That's you apologizing for the chaos of your thoughts or perhaps not apologizing, just identifying. Yeah, but it, let me ask mm -hmm. the question, uh, since we talked about Michael Levin and yourself, who I think are very kind of uh, radical, big independent thinkers, uh, can we reverse engineer your process of thinking autonomously? How do you do it? How can humans do it? How can you avoid being influenced by, uh, what is it, stage? Stage three. Well, why would you want to do that? It's uh, you see what is working for you, and if it's uh, not working for you, you build another structure that works better for you, right? Mm -hmm. And so I f found myself in when I was thrown into this world in a state where my intuitions were not working for me. I was not able to um, understand how I would be able to survive in this world and build the things that I was interested in, build the kinds of relationship I needed to build. Um, work on the topics that I uh, wanted to make progress on. And so I had to learn. And I, for me, Twitter is not some tool of publication. It's not something where I put stuff that I entirely believe to be true and provable. It's an interactive notebook in which I explore possibilities. And I found that when I tried to understand how the mind and how consciousness works, I was quite optimistic. I thought there need to, uh, needs to be a big body of knowledge that I can just study and that works. And so I entered um, studies in philosophy and computer science and um, later psychology and a bit of neuroscience and so on. And I was disappointed by uh, what I found because I found that the questions of how consciousness and so on works, how emotion uh, works, how it's possible that the system can experience anything, Uh, how motivation emerges in the mind were not being answered by uh, the authorities that I met and uh, the schools that were around. And instead, I found that it was individual thinkers that had useful ideas mm -hmm. that sometimes were good, sometimes were not so good, sometimes were adopted by a large group of people, sometimes were rejected by large groups of people. But um, for me, it was much more interesting to see these minds as individuals. And in my perspective, thinking is still something that is done not in groups, that has to be done by individuals. So that motivated you to become an individual thinker yourself? I didn't have a choice. Hmm. Basically, I didn't find a group that thought in a way where I felt, okay, um, I can just adopt everything that everybody thinks here, and now I understand how consciousness works, right? So, or how the mind works, or how thinking works, or what thinking even is, or what feelings are, and how they're implemented and so on. So to figure all this out, I had to take a lot of um, ideas from individuals and then try to put them together in something that works for myself. And on one hand, I think it helps if you try to go down and find first principles on, <clears throat> on which you can recreate how thinking works, how languages work, what representation is, <clears throat> whether representation is necessary, how the relationship between a representing agent and the world works in general. But how do you escape the influence? Once again, the pressure of the crowd, whether it's you in responding to the, the pressure or you being swept up by the pressure. If you even just look at Twitter, the opinions of the crowd. I don't feel pressure from the crowd. I'm completely immune to that. <laughs> in the same sense, I don't have respect for authority. I have respect for what an individual is accomplishing or have a, a respect for mental firepower or... So, but it's not that I meet somebody and get slack jawed and uh, unable to speak. Um, or when a large group of people has a certain idea that is different from mine, I don't necessarily feel in intimidated, which has often been a problem for me in my life because I lack um, instincts that other people develop at a very young age and that uh, help with their self-preservation in a social environment. So I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. <laughs> yeah. So is there a practical advice you can give on how to think paradig paradigmatically, how to think independently? Or, you know, because you've kind of said, I had no choice. But I think to a degree you have a choice because you said you want to be productive. And I think thinking independently is productive if what you're curious about is understanding the world. 
especially when the problems are very kind of new and open. And so it seems like this is a active process. Like we can choose to do that, we can practice it. Well, there is a the very basic question when you read a theory that you find convincing or interesting, how do you know? It's very interesting to figure out what are the sources of that other person, not uh, which authority can they refer to that is then taking off the burden of being truthful, but how does this authority in turn know? What is the epistemic chain to observables? What are the first principles from which the whole thing is derived? And when I was young, I was not blessed with a lot of um, people around myself who knew how to make proofs from first principles. And mm -hmm. I think mathematicians do this quite naturally. But most of the great mathematicians do not become mathematicians in school, but they tend to be self-taught because uh, school teachers tend not to be mathematicians, right? They tend not to be people who derive things from first principles. So when you ask your school teacher, why does two plus two equal four? Um, does your school teacher give you the right answer? Like um, It's a, a simple game and there are many simple games that you could play. And um, most of the, those games that you could just take different rules, would not lead to an interesting arithmetic. And so it's just an exploration, but you can try what happens if you take different axioms. And here is how you build axioms and derive um, addition from them. And uh, build addition is some basically syntactic sugar in it. And so this, I wish that somebody would have opened me this vista and explained to me how I can build a language in my own mind and from which I can derive what I'm seeing and how I can, which I can make geometry and counting and um, all the number games that we are playing in our life. And on the other hand, I felt that I learned a lot of this while I was programming as a child. Hmm. When you start out with a computer like a Commodore 64, who doesn't, hmm. which doesn't have a lot of functionality, it's relatively easy to see how a bunch of relatively simple circuits Uh, are just basically performing hashes between uh, bit patterns and how you can build the entirety of mathematics and computation on top of this and all the representational languages that you need. Man, Commodore 64 could be one of the sexiest machines ever built, if I so say so myself. 